Hello and welcome to another Keysmash Studios video. Today we're going to be talking about how to respawn a collectible that we made last week. If you'd like to see the video for that collectible that we made last week, I'll put a link in the description, so just go down there and check that out. As I hit play here, and we'll just fix our scale here. As I hit play here, we can see that when we run into a collectible, it disappears. And as of right now, it doesn't reappear. So we need to come up with a way to make it reappear and in a way that makes sense for our game. So in order to do that, we're going to be going back into our code and we're going to be going back into our collision section. So here we are where we were last time. If we look at our code here, we found the place where we looked at a collision. We said, you know, if we run into a collider and that collider has a tag and it's HP, then our health goes up by 25. If our health's over 100, it just resets to 100, so our health can't ever be more than 100. So that was our collider in our interactable that we did last time, but now we need to come up with a way for it to respawn. And we need to do that in a way that's intelligent about how we code, uh, meaning that we don't really want to code something multiple times. So right now I have two collider colliders, two collectibles that are inside this game. But what happens if I have like 10 or 20? We really want a way that we can make this respawn thing work for the two things that we have and any future collectibles that we create within the game. So we're going to make one function that allows us to respawn every single object. And in order to do that, we're going to show it off two ways. We're going to show off a timed respawn. So after four seconds, something respawns. And then I'm going to show off how to do it with a random time. So, you know, sometime between 10 and 20 seconds, we want something to respawn. So I'll show off the timed respawn with the ammo and the random respawn with the HP. And then you can pick whichever one suits your game best. So before I get started on all that, we're going to go instantiate our random. So I'm going to create a private random. And I'm going to use a system.rand, uh, system.random, and I'm going to call it rand. And you can use a Unity Engine random. It doesn't really matter. It's just a preference for me that I prefer the system one. So. We're creating a new system.random, and it is called rand. Uh, it's, there's a few notes worth mentioning when we create a random. It's important that you instantiate it once because it's a closed loop that runs on our processor, so we really don't want to instantiate this in a coroutine or anything like that because it leads to a memory leak. So if you have it on a thread or a coroutine, I would highly advise against that and instantiate it once at the top of your class as opposed to something else. We don't want to do it in a function. So now we have this random variable, it's called rand, and we're going to use that in a bit. Now we're back down to our colliders. We're going to create a new class, and it's going to seem scary for a bit because we're going to use coroutines instead of invoke like we've used in the past. Um, but coroutine is going to let us do this once for everything, as opposed to repeating the code multiple times with an invoke. So when we do a, a coroutine, we have to create a function that returns an I enumerator. And that sounds really scary and you don't really need to know what it means. Um, but essentially what this is gonna let us do is create a method or a function that allows us to pass a parameter. So we can pass the collision the thing that we ran into to our function without having to repeat that function a bunch of different times. So we're going to make an I enumerator called respawn, if I can spell. And that's going to take in a collider 2D called collision. And you'll notice that when we hit enter and set up our function, it's still underlined as red. That's totally fine. That's because we haven't returned a wait time. And you'll see what that means in just a second. So I'm just going to leave that as red for right now. And we're going to go to how we set this up within our code. So coming down here to ammo, 
we talked about how this is going to be a set time respawn. So in our respawn, we're going to say start coroutine. And then we're going to give it an enumerator to go through. So um, we created one up here. It's called respawn. So we're going to say respawn. And then within respawn, we're just going to give it the collision that it needs. So we're going to pass it collision from up here, this collision that we ran into. And we're going to give it that 2D collider for it to go. So then after it comes up here, it starts this coroutine. It says, go to respawn with this parameter. It comes here. And here we actually need to put the delay in. So we can say yield. Oops. So we can say yield return new. And then we're going to do a wait for seconds. And then we're going to put our delay here. So I mentioned before that we're going to have a set time and a random time. So what this tells me is that we actually need to pass a second variable to our respawn timer. So we're going to put an int time for it to be accepted here. And we're going to put our time here as our delay. So we're going to say return and wait for so many seconds, and the seconds will pass in each time we call it. Once it waits for that second, for that so many seconds, then we do stuff. And we'll do that stuff in a second. So let's come down here to our start coroutine respawn collision, and we actually need to pass this a time. So we said before that this was a four second delay. So we're just gonna pass this a four. And it's important to note I put an int here. If you would like to make it like four and a half seconds, it just needs to swap to a float. It doesn't matter, it'll still work. So after four seconds, it comes up here, it starts this coroutine. Actually, this needs to be, I just realized, this needs to be inside this collider here. So it comes here, it starts the coroutine with the respawn name. And it says, here's the collider that we just ran into, and here's the time. Four seconds later, we want something to happen. So it comes here, it says, okay, I'm waiting for four seconds and now I'm gonna do stuff. And the other thing that we passed to this coroutine was the collider. So we're gonna say our collision, the thing that we ran into, we wanna grab the game object to that. We'll say dot game object. And we're just gonna set that to active. And we're gonna say true. So it looks scary. But in reality, all it's doing is it's saying, I'm going to wait for four seconds, and then I'm going to turn on. Well, that's great. Let's do that with a random timer, and then we'll test it out. So coming down here to HP, we set it to false. So here, we need to do our code for random. So this is going to be almost the exact same thing, but with a random time as opposed to a fixed time. So we're going to say, then we're going to start this coroutine. And it's also going to have this respawn function. And we're going to need to put things in here. So we need to pass it the collision game object again. What did we run into? Well, we ran into collision. And then we need to give it a time. And then it'll be good to go. So what time do we want to give it? We want to do a rand.next. And then random.next, if I press down here twice, tells us that we can give it a minimum value and a maximum value. So if I want to say there's a minimum value of four seconds, and then I want to give it a maximum value of how long can it be between respawns. Let's say 12 here. This in the parentheses. It's important to note that in random, the second number is not inclusive, meaning that this range that we passed it, we said it can be any number between 4 and 12. It's actually an exclusive 12, which means it's any number between 4 and 11. But what this does is it goes up to our coroutine. It says, all right, you're going to run the coroutine respawn. Great, we have that. It's got this collision, and it's going to wait for some, time amount, some amount of time between 4 and 11 seconds. And then it's going to turn that collider back on.
so let's go test this out and see how it does. So let's go to Unity. And remember that our HP, let's fix the scaling. Our HP is the random amount of time between 4 and 11 seconds. And our ammo is exactly 4 seconds. So let's go forward here. We'll hit our HP and we'll see if that respawns at some point in the next 11 seconds. And there it is. About six seconds later, it respawns. And our ammo is exactly four seconds. So if we run into this ammo, we can see that our ammo goes up. And then four seconds later, it's going to pop right back out. So that's two ways for us to respawn our colliders. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. We also have a Discord channel with a support and questions tab. If you would like to ask any questions there, there's a link in the description below to our Discord channel. If you found this video to be helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed on the video. If you really liked this video and it was super helpful, there's a number of links in the description below from our Twitch channel to our Patreon, and clicking on any one of those would be an immense amount of help. As always, I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help, and hopefully we'll see you next week.